and welcome my name is Tara and in this video I'm going to be talking about the void now the void came to me just the other day actually and I may have heard it in passing I'm sure somewhere along the lines with regards to the process of our journey but it really really resonated with me especially with what I've been going through myself recently um, with my own transformative journey so a lot of the videos that I uh, publish here are based on my experiences what I've researched what I've experienced on a personal level and and um, through my journey, I'm going to uh, hopefully be able to guide you through yours. Now, the void as I see it is a time when we arrive in a place of nothingness, of letting go of the thoughts, letting go of the emotions. And you may have caught some of my other content pieces where I talked about managing the emotions and the mind. And when we manage the emotions and the mind, then we become in a place of stillness. We arrive in a place of oneness we arrive in a state of nothingness. But nothingness to us, after we've gone through a life of maybe chaos, traumas, um, the life that we live in a normal society, overrun with um, social media and conversations and needs and timelines and noise. Once we have filtered out the noise, once we have filtered out the excess of society and the pressure that also is that is that we feel that we carry through that noise then we arrive in a place of the void of nothingness so it's void of the thoughts it's void of the emotions it's void of the pressures of the day It's void of the influences of our surroundings and arriving to a state of emptiness it feels like emptiness it feels like the void but in the void it can be very uncomfortable because if we've lived a lifestyle that has been very noisy, if we've had a childhood that's been traumatic, a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fighting, a lot of, um, a lot of distractions, a lot of chaos, then we get used to that vibrational frequency. We get used to living in a life of uncertainty, of change, of um, moving around haphazardly even in our environment, but always on, always turned on. Our mind is on, we're searching, we're seeking, we're learning, we're talking. We need to feel activated in order to feel productive or in order to feel like we're accomplishing something or in order to feed something on a very subconscious level. So a lot of this is very, very important work because we all have these layers of some degree within us. We all have the mind, our mind can become very active. And for some of us too, we can feel in society, especially mass society, feel that it's important to have the mind on, to be working, to be productive, to be thinking, to be, to be um, discovering, to be talking, to be always on. That's not necessarily healthy, of course, because then we lose our sense of self and we lose the ability to turn it off. And so if we're used to maybe being raised that way or living in a life of chaos and movement and anxiety and production, then it's going to be very difficult to feel comfortable in the void. And again, the void is nothingness. The void is where we start to question our life, where we start to analyze ourselves where we start to think about life on the bigger perspective, on the bigger landscape, because we start tapping into the greatness. We start tapping into the source. So if our mind is always on, if our emotions are ruling us, then we are not allowing ourselves to be in that state of oneness and that void, but it can be very uncomfortable. So there's going to be an interplay, and I've talked about this before, there's going to be an interplay between where we've been, what has been comfortable for us, and into something completely different. And that is the void. That is the nothingness. And it's going to feel like that for a while. But while you're in that void, that is where you receive answers from your greater knowing, from all. That's where you see the truth within matters. That's where you start to fine tune your senses that's when you start to understand your emotions. That's when you start to understand people deeply and the world deeply. That's when you start to awaken your intuition, your third eye. That's also where you get to start to create, where you get to start to manifest, where you start to connect with yourself on a level like you've never connected before. 
Now it's going to feel uncomfortable arriving in that place because our old habitual self will want to go back into where we've been. So it is a very uh, conscious effort. It is, it does require work. And the best way to get there is through meditation. It's through meditation and self-awareness. And a lot of these videos that I've been publishing touch on a lot of these um, practices that you can incorporate to reach that state, to reach the state of oneness, to reach that state for manifestation and of course, law of attraction and being very aware of your energies, managing your emotions, managing the thoughts, managing your frequency, projecting into the future and creating the life that you desire. Now, the void also comes with challenges as well. Being in that place of vastness, of nothingness, that's where we also face our shadow. That's where we question life. That's where we question ourselves. We may have realizations of maybe the life I was living wasn't actually what I really truly wanted, but then who am I and what do I truly want? But that is where we need to arrive in order to ask those questions. If we don't arrive in that place, we will never ask those questions and we will never search and seek for our bigger, greater meaning in life. We will never achieve more in our life if we don't go there. We won't, we won't heal. We won't be able to um, understand more about our past if we don't go there. So it can be a frightening place to be. Because again, our mind and our habitual self or subconscious self of old patterns won't necessarily enjoy being there because it's not familiar. And for a lot of us going through this incredible transformation right now, we haven't been there. We might be tapping into it. We might be starting to reach it in certain parts and, and certain abilities, but we need to go there more. We need to visit that place more than nothingness letting go and arriving in a place of oneness, arriving in a place of expansion, arriving in a place of greatness. And that's where we get to create. That's also where we get to heal and where we get to transform. We again will face our shadow. We will face some of the hard, hard, hard aspects of ourselves going into memories. Memories will come up from the surface. Old energies will come up from the surface because we also need to go through the purge of letting go of the old. We also have to revisit the past. We also have to understand ourselves on a deeper level. And again, many of us, many of society won't really necessarily feel comfortable doing that. Because if we've been raised a certain way, if we've been living a certain way, then we've been used to seeing life a certain way. And then our reality gets rocked then we start to start to question, well, what is reality? What is normal? And usually when um, the word normal comes in, I see that as limited. I see that as limited. I see the way that one has perceived life to be a certain way is limited. That is not the right way. Normal is not the right way. What is normal and what is reality? And when you go really deep into this, I've had moments myself, what is real? What is real? What is my reality? And you can go right down the rabbit hole with these feelings and questions when you start to really uncover more and more depth of who you are and the greater mysteries of life. It opens up into a far greater understanding and experience and then a realization that there is so much more to life than work and sleep. <laughs> there is far more to life than being miserable. There's far more in life than being limited. And when you start tapping into this, you realize how much there is available for you, for all of us. And this is part of our journey. And it is a very interesting, interesting aspect to our journey that we have to explore. Then we go into what is love? What is... Um, what is expansion? How does that feel? Now, I talk about this a lot, but you have to go through it and feel it for yourself. I can tell you as much as I can, and I can try to explain it and articulate it as much as I can. But again, you have to experience it yourself. And the best way is spending time alone, turning the distractions off, not spending a lot of time on social media or on TV, watching TV, we shouldn't be watching TV. And I'll do another complete different episode on that altogether about turning media off because it doesn't feed our soul. It doesn't feed our evolution towards a higher state of being and towards a higher state of consciousness. 
it limits us and it's becoming more and more obvious as you go through this process, you'll see it. You'll see things more. You'll start to see the reality more. And for myself, I remember probably 15 years ago when I was working corporate, I was watching TV every morning while I was getting ready, ironing my clothes, getting ready for the day. I would have the news on and I thought it was feeding my mind. I thought I was smarter for watching the news. I would watch um, a lot of intellectual shows on TV and I thought it was, and yes, don't get me wrong, some of them are great for feeding the mind, okay? But a lot of media, news reports, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the quality has gone downhill, but there's a lot of noise in our environment and a lot of noise in social media, news especially, media in general, that is very distracting. And I'm, I'm sure if you're watching this, you already know, but it really is turning all distractions off and really spending time and being comfortable being with yourself and feeling into the vastness of your experience and your existence. And what can you learn through that? You can gain guidance through it. You can gain insight. You can gain creative genius. You can heal from the past. You can understand yourself more. You can understand the world more. You can understand relationships more. You can problem solve and troubleshoot your own situations within yourself. Again, emotions and thoughts easier with a greater sense of awareness. So this is hugely important. And I again, I know it can be a bit daunting and it can be a bit fearful for some to reach the void, to reach that place of vastness, of being completely alone and isolated maybe. But again, those are that place when you arrive there is going to be the most profound experience of your life. That's where things are going to turn around. That's where you're going to have those big realizations and you're going to open up for more. And when you reach the void, it's important to open up for the expansion, to know what you want on the other side. It's almost the, the in-between of two worlds from the 3D to the 5D. The void is your passageway towards expansion, towards creation, towards living in a more sustained, higher vibrational experience of life and the ability to create and be in flow and be at one and be at peace and create a, an incredibly meaningful life where you get to resolve old wounds, where you get to step away from the past and you get to experience a completely new expression of yourself. This is what it's all about. And this is what I've been experiencing. So the more I've been in the void, I've had situations from the past come in, creep in, old thoughts, old shadows, old darkness coming in, the triggers that come in. And now I see those triggers as a gift. Yes, okay, good. Now I can release them. I'm one step closer to going to the other side, to that higher uh, experience of life. So the more I let go, the greater that place becomes for me. And then I understand more about myself. And now I'm opening up more and more and more to expansion, to connection with source, to my higher self, to all that is, to creation, to love, to flow. It's amazing. And I'm reaching it more and more and more as I do this work. And this is what's going to happen for you. And that's why I'm doing these videos because I'm guiding you through my process as well to help you through yours. I have to do it now, otherwise I'll forget. I will forget how this feels because it is happening faster and faster and faster for me now because I've been doing the work and being very aware and conscious of it. And trust me, sometimes it gets tiring doing the work. Sometimes I just wanna live my life, but I am closer and closer. And because I'm closer, things are now starting to happen faster for me. So it is a learning experience of feeling through these motions. And that's why our feelings need to be very tuned in. We need to be very dialed in with our feelings. That's why emotions are very important because when we feel more, we get to work with this energy in a very more, in a more profound way. We get to understand ourselves more. We get to let go. We get to process. We get to release. We get to feel, we get to create. We need our emotions, we need our feelings, and we need our senses in order to do this. But if they have been suppressed and repressed, then we're limiting ourselves from greater experiences and greater creation. All right, so I hope this offered you some guidance when you need it the most. Until next time, I will be seeing you very soon. Take care.